I would consider bacon a nearly perfect food. Everybody loves it, even vegans. And you think it couldn't possibly get any better, right? Wrong. One, two, three, four. You can make bacon from home so incredibly easily, and it's about time that more people start doing it. It requires minimal ingredients, with the exception of a smoker, if you choose to smoke it, which I'll talk about ways to smoke it later on in the video. Some pork belly, some salt, a little bit of sugar, and a little bit of curing salt, which is really easy to find nowadays. Plus, you know, a little bit of patience. Now, let's do this, shall we? I like to start off by making a big batch of dry cure. That way I always have some of my cabinet to use whenever I want to make it. And all I got to do is get a percentage. So in a large bowl, you're going to add two cups or 400 grams of kosher salt, one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar, and six and a half teaspoons or 60 grams of pink curing salt. Now, when I say curing salt, yes, I mean sodium nitrite. This is also known as prog powder number one, not prog powder number two, but number one. It's pretty widely available in stores nowadays, but if for some reason you can't find it, I'll have a link below in the description for the one that I use. Anyway, once everything's in your bowl, give it a nice whisk until everything is thoroughly combined and store it at room temperature. You're only going to use a little bit of this stuff at a time when making bacon, but now you always have it at the ready. Now for the most important ingredient, skin on pork belly. Now it can be pretty much any weight, but you want it to be at least three pounds or 1,360 grams. I know there's a lot of numbers happening right now. Don't worry, it'll be in the description. But anyway, it's important to know the amount in grams just because you can get a salt cure percentage. I do two and a half percent. So basically you're just going to take the weight of your pork belly in grams and multiply it by point. 025, and that number would be the weight in grams of how much cure you need to use. Here's a little dance, and uh, don't don't know what that is. Now this pork belly weighed three pounds and seven ounces, or 1,571 grams. So using that formula, I was able to figure out that I needed 39 grams of that dry cure mixture. And you're gonna take that measured dry cure and spread it all over your entire pork belly, all surfaces, the top, the bottom, the sides, all the edges, and make sure that every last sprinkling is used. Rub it in real nicely. Now, once it's thoroughly coated in your dry cure, it's pretty much good to go at that point, but I like to add some flavoring and aromatics. So I'll take some crushed and bruised rosemary sprigs, maybe some garlic cloves with the skins left on, just barely crushed with the back of your palm, some toasted and crushed juniper berries. All this stuff is optional. You don't have to add the aromatics if you don't want to, but you can use pretty much any hearty aromatic that you want. Now, once all that's done, place your cure rubbed pork belly into a two gallon Ziploc bag and place in the refrigerator to cure for seven days, flipping it halfway through. So four days in, flip it over onto the other side. And there'll probably be some liquid that comes out and it'll fill up the bag, that's okay, that's totally normal. Just make sure that that liquid's being distributed because that's gonna help cure the pork belly. Oh, and I almost forgot, don't forget to label your bag with a Sharpie or a pen or whatever so that you know when you started it. That way you can keep track of how many days it's been curing. Okay, now you can place it in the fridge. Now, once your pork belly has been fully cured for the seven days and all that jazz, rinse off the cure thoroughly with water and pat it dry with paper towels. Now, at this point, traditionally you should be smoking it, so I chose to smoke it, but you can also just use an oven a lot of the flavor really just comes from the cure rather than the smoke but i will say that the smoke adds quite a lovely flavor whether you use an oven or a smoker the cook time is going to be the same you're going to cook it at 200 degrees fahrenheit until the internal temperature reads 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, because I know people are gonna ask, I used one of my old master-built propane vertical smokers. I added a good mix of both soaked wood chips and dry wood chips, and I smoked that bad boy, as previously described, at 200 degrees Fahrenheit until the internal temperature reached 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I did add wood chips about every 45 minutes, so I only really needed to add them about twice, I think maybe three times in the whole process, because this only takes about about two hours. So here's a funny story about how smoking this went. First off, I had to go into the public area of my apartment building in order to do this legally. And after I poured myself a drink, as you see here, it started raining profusely. So I'm out here smoking alone in this courtyard with rain going all over me, but I always come prepared. 
Now, once your pork belly is done, you're just gonna take a quick look and appreciate that, like really just appreciate that. And while the fat's still hot, you're gonna go ahead and remove the skin using a sharp knife. Uh, it'll actually peel off on its own, but I like to use the knife to help guide the skin off. That way it comes off evenly and it doesn't pull off any major chunks of fat. Oh, and while I say hot, I mean like warm. Don't burn yourself doing this. Let it cool down a little bit before you do that. And now your pork belly has become bacon. Now, the first thing that I would suggest is letting it come down to room temperature and refrigerating it overnight or at least about eight hours for the fat to solidify so it slices easier and it cooks properly. And now you have your bacon and it'll last about two to three weeks in the fridge or frozen indefinitely. And a quick little side note, don't just cut it into thin slices. Try cutting it into super thick cubes and then frying those up but leaving the inside nice and tender. And I promise you that will make the most amazing baked potato or salad or whatever just trust me, you now have so much versatility with this. Of course, you could always just fry them up as normal over medium heat, flipping often, and you, you know how to make bacon. It's not, it's not rocket science. All right, guys, and that is it. Homemade bacon, surprisingly easy. As I said before, a little bit of patience and minimal ingredients, and you'll have your very own bacon from home. There are so many advantages of making homemade bacon that makes all the time worth it, one of the biggest to me is not only the huge flavor upgrade, but also the versatility of being able to slice it into whatever shape and size you want it to be. This recipe is actually adapted from Michael Ruhlman's book, Charcuterie. It's a fantastic book. It is hands down one of my favorite cookbooks. If you guys want to get it, there will be a link below. He actually gave me a quote on a book that I put out, which is no longer available. Rest in peace. But he's a really cool guy and he makes extremely informative books. So if you guys wanna check it out, there'll be a link below. But with all that said, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next week.